Good morning. I think everybody's awake. It has been an incredible, incredible week. Uh, God has just truly blessed us. Uh, I have had the, the privilege of being in, in this space right here uh, a few times this week. Uh, Wednesday night, I don't know if you were aware of this or not, but this room was invaded by youth. And it was, a, it was an incredible night. Uh, we were blessed with our praise team uh, leading us in, in worship. And then with my, my good friend, uh, Pastor Brian uh, Daniels and his daughter, Briley, actually spoke. And the energy was just, it was an, an incredible night uh, to be here. And then um, we were here uh, again uh, yesterday and uh, what, what, a, what an incredible day it was. It, it was the subject, such a dark, uh, uh, depressing, discouraging uh, subject to, to listen into, but also very enlightening and to make us aware of what's really going on around us. And, uh, and so I was, uh, I was very impressed. Katie, I was very impressed by your leadership and by all the, the ladies and gentlemen who came yesterday and, and participated and put together uh, this event. Um, I mean, I've been to a lot of events, a lot of events over the years, and I want to tell you by far, yesterday was one of the, one of the finest uh, put, put together events that I've been at. So thank you so much for your hard work and everybody that worked with you. Uh, we, and then, I don't know if you're aware of this, but yesterday at, at the camp, I got to say this, because TJ's here, uh, <laughs> the East Ohio District youth, uh, there wasn't a, a lot of them, but there, there, there was enough that came yesterday, and they worked at Canaan Acres while I was here sitting listening. They were working hard. I love it. Um, they got the, uh, the tabernacle clean for me and got some chairs set up, and it's ready for um, a couple of the camps that we're going to be doing. So and did some other work around the ground. So TJ, uh, thank you so much. Appreciate all the, the hard work that you uh, put into that yesterday. Um, also, you know, today, today is Pentecost Sunday. I was thinking uh, on the way over, often we, um, we hear in the church, maybe in settings like this, that wouldn't it be great if this would be the day that the Lord will return, although that would be incredible, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be incredible if today would be a day like 2,000 years ago, over 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem where a community of people gathered together and didn't know what was about to happen, but there would be those that had been praying for 10 days that the Holy Spirit would come upon them and they would be filled in such a way that they would proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that 3,000 people would give their hearts to Jesus. Amen. I pray for a day like that. That would prepare us for the day of his coming, wouldn't it? We should anticipate those days. This morning, let us stand and prepare to worship our Lord in song. Come on, let's sing this great old hymn of the church. Y'all know it. Let's sing it. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus.
for the souls of all who come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel, shall not faint. By His blood and in His name, in His freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. Yeah. 
protected and alone like a rose trampled on the ground you took the fall and part of me thinking as we were singing together, you may be seated. When uh, Jesus was baptized, we recall that John had baptized him and he came up out of the water and that in the form of a dove had come upon him. It was the Holy Spirit. And when Jesus came up out of that water, you know, I'm thinking, we're saying Jesus was on a mission. He had just a little over three years to accomplish that mission before he would fulfill his ultimate purpose. He came to live, to show us how to live. We saw in the perfect man what it meant to be a person of holiness because he lived empowered by the Spirit of God. And, and, and you think about the three years as a short amount of time it, it really is. I mean, as the older we get, we, we realize that three years is just not a lot of time. And he accomplished so much in those three years. We read about his life. In fact, John proclaims in his book, it, that the, the book of the Revelation, that if everything that Jesus did in those three years had been written down, there would not be enough books for the world to contain them. He was on a mission to save you and me. He has called us, the church, to that mission. And when we think about it in those terms, we have a limited amount of time to accomplish that mission. We think, you know, tomorrow, 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 today is the day of salvation. Today is the opportunity. Don't let it slip, slip by you. We have uh, just a couple of announcements this morning I want to remind you of. Uh, this Friday evening, I'm, I'm getting that right, right? This Friday night, 24th is Friday. Okay, good deal. I don't want to get you out there on the wrong day. If you do, I'll have you working. Um, we have a, a banquet uh, at Canaan Acres you're invited to. would like to know, like, sometime today if you're coming so we can get food ordered. Um, my nephew is coming uh, to share with us and worship, uh, not because he's my nephew, a uh, very talented young man. Uh, you will not be sorry if you come and hear Brent, uh, Brent sing. Uh, we're going we're gonna to eat together on, on Friday night. I was thinking about this. We're going to eat together on Friday night. Uh, we're going to uh, listen to my nephew sing a lot of great gospel music. Uh, but we're going to have church together on Friday night. That's what, it's, uh, that's what uh, the ministry is about at Canaan Acres Christian Camp. It's about gathering together and having church together. And uh, so it's going to be a Friday night of, of worship. So I invite you to come and worship with us. Also, uh, I know that this may not sound like a big deal to some of you, but uh, we are updating the directory. That's a huge deal. Because if you actually update the directory with me, get your names in there, get your information in there, it'll make life so much easier on me. Because sometimes when I'm trying to find one of you and your name isn't in the directory, I got to go in and get in the file cabinet 
and I got to search. And, man, I, I just hate doing that. I would rather just open the book up and there your name is. So would you help me out? And uh, because I would really like to be able to, you know, contact you. And uh, the secretary also asked me, uh, Tina, if you would help her out, uh, if you would do that. So, hey, listen, go out there and make sure your information is correct. If it's correct, you're all good. If your information isn't there, please turn it in so we can get you in there. We're going to update it. It's going to be brand new. The one that you have will be obsolete. We pray that in six months it will be obsolete again. We're praying we add, keep adding new names to the family. So help us with that. And, and this time, let's spend some time in fellowship with each other. We are so excited that you all love each other. But it's time now for service to continue. So if you'll come and find your places as we worship the Lord, love this song, Our Living Hope. How great the chasm that lay between us, how high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. And through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is risen, Jesus Christ, my
absolutely no hope if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus. If it wasn't for the blood that he shed on the cross for us. If it wasn't for that perfect, spotless life that he lived. He was able to go into that most holy of holy places. The Bible talks about him entering into the, to the copy that was on earth, entering into heaven. Can't you just imagine? God the Father had waited for generations and generations, but no one could obtain that, that right until Jesus. Until Jesus was ready to die and willing to die on the cross for us, shed his blood so that we could enter into the most holy place also. I don't know about you, but I'm so thankful for the blood because it's the blood that allowed us the opportunity to call him Abba Father, my Lord, my God, my Savior. It's all about the blood. Come on, sing this with us. You may be seated as we sing this song. I was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. Sin separated the breach was far too wide but from the far side of the chasm you had me in your sight so you made a way across the great divide left behind heaven's throne to build it and there at the cross you paid the debt I owed broke my chains free my soul for the first time I had hope thank you Jesus for the blood of mine thank you Jesus stronger than the wonder working power of God. 
Let us pray together. Father, this is uh, one of those mornings where we, uh, we sense your presence so, so strong, so real. Father, your, your spirit has fallen upon us. We, uh, we think of how you have been throughout history with your people, how you've always been a relational God who uh, came where, where the people were. I am thinking of, uh, I'm thinking of, of the, the, the original temple that was in the wilderness and how your glory, Father, would just come over that, that temple and that the people would know at that time that, Lord, that you, you were present. And it would be such a, a reverence, such a respect of who you are. Knowing that you are a great, incredible, and awesome God, that you are the God who created everything. The God who simply speaks a word and it's done. whispers into creation and things begin to transpire. The God who, who spoke on earth in the flesh, in the person of Jesus Christ, who at times would go and lay hands on the sick and other times just simply would just speak a word and those individuals will be healed. We believe that you're the same God today that you were then. And that you are still speaking healing into the lives of those that we love. We think of our prayer list and you've done incredible work this week. I know more than we could ever imagine. We think of how you were with Caden this week, and we continue to lift Caden up and ask, Lord, that you just touch and continue to bring healing. And our prayer is that that, that tumor will never grow back and he will never have to, to face this surgery again. May we boldly pray before your throne this morning, Lord. Where we would agree upon this, where two would agree upon this, in your name it would be done. I thank you, Father, for being with Courtney this week and helping her to get through her surgery and continue to give her the strength that she has. And, oh, we thank you for how you have been working in John's life. And there are so many others. Lord, I, uh, I have a special one spoken request this morning. I know that others do in the room. I'm watching an individual... Oh, they're, they're so miserable right now. They're so far away from you. And their life literally is more of a mess than it could ever be. But Lord, I know that you are the one that can turn all of that around. You are the life changer. You are the one who restores. You are the one who brings new purpose, new hope, new life. And so, Father, we pray in these moments, in our mind's eye, we look into that individual's life and heart, and we pray your presence very strong, 
your Holy Spirit as it, as it fell in days of old upon the, upon the temple. We pray this day that would fall upon these that we pray for. Some would be encouraged and others would fall under conviction to the point that they would make a decision to acknowledge that they need only your help and your help alone to deliver them. We thank you this morning for the songs that we have sang together, understanding that you are the one who has redeemed us. You are our hope. You gave your life for our life. And Lord, you were the only one that was adequate to do so. We did not deserve it, yet you loved us anyway, more than we could ever imagine. May we be grateful. May we today thank you. May we express the love back to you that you have expressed unto our lives, not just in these moments where sometimes it's easy to do, when we leave the sanctuary and we go out into the world, may we express our love for you and the way that we live our lives among others. May they see you in us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The, uh, Ken, the uh, Children's Church can be dismissed. Kinder Church, I guess it's called. And ushers, if you'll receive the offering. We're going to sing one more great song.
soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah. Still in the book of Matthew in the sixth chapter. As you're turning there this morning, I just uh, want to give a shout out this morning to our praise team. They've done an incredible job this week. Uh, they've several times in several different groups, <laughs> like yesterday, uh, a lot smaller group. Emily was here leading worship with, with Heather, and then uh, the other night we had uh, a, a, a version of our, our praise team. And then again this morning, we have an awesome praise team, don't we? We, because you can give them a hand because they are, they are awesome. Um, and uh, our sound people are incredible. I can tell you that uh, thank you so much for what you do back here, Rob. Uh, you keep me um, you keep me quiet when I need to be quiet, and you keep me on when I need to be on. And uh, that is appreciated, and, and everybody else in the room appreciates it too, because if you had me on when I was singing, it would not be quite as... So thank you for all that you do. I, it's, it's, it's wonderful to know that he's at work back here. Give him a hand. Um, and all that participate in this. Hey, we're, we're in the book of Matthew uh, in the sixth chapter here. And uh, I actually was going to finish this up this morning, but I'm not. So uh, I'm going to just uh, discuss a portion of the, of the Lord's Prayer this morning. As uh, we get into that, of course, I want to read the whole prayer to you again. Uh, many of you in the room are familiar with the prayer. I know that you are, uh, because some of you are my age and older. And uh, there was a time that uh, we, every day before we started class, we, uh, we recited this prayer. You remember that, right? Uh, many of us in, in this particular room, we, we do. Uh, and then, of course, here, here in the past uh, couple of years, uh, I don't know about other uh, radio stations, but I do know that the fish has taken upon itself that several times a day they have local pastors praying the Lord's Prayer. I don't know if you know that or not, but they do. And uh, I'm very encouraged by that because there have been times that, like, I've been sitting early in the morning. Uh, for example, on those rare occasions when I have to drive a, a bus or some other vehicle for the school, I'm sitting there waiting, and, uh, and all of a sudden there will be one of the local pastors come on, and they will do the Lord's Prayer. And uh, it gives me an opportunity to pray into that prayer. So I, as we've done this, I hope that you've got a better understanding of why Jesus was teaching his disciples to pray this way. Uh, sometimes we, we've prayed this prayer. I know as, as children we prayed this prayer, and we just kind of learned to recite it. And uh, we just, it was like we, we did the pledge, we did the, we did the prayer, and we kind of forgot and got on with the day. Uh, but there is so much that Jesus is telling us in this particular prayer. If you've ever, if you've ever asked the question, teach me to pray, here's the where to start. Here's where to start. Start right here and let Jesus teach you to pray. So I'm using uh, maybe a different translation that you were reading from this morning, but follow along with me. Uh, you'll be familiar. Uh, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. That's what we'll focus on in verse 12 this morning. 
Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to focus on that, uh, that 12th uh, verse this morning. Uh, forgive us our debts as we forgive our, our debtors. Uh, you might be asking the question, you know, what is Jesus talking about debts? Uh, because, you know, we think in the form of debt, we think of owing somebody something, right? Um, I mean, I've talked with individuals who have no debt. What a blessing. Other individuals do have debt. Um, it's very difficult to live in the culture that we live in today without debt, but it can be done. It, 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 it sure, it can, it can be done. Um, in this context, though, I did take the liberty of looking up the word because I have the same questions that you have. And uh, I learned that the word uh, meant iniquity. It also meant sin. And so actually in Luke's gospel, uh, Luke actually uses the word sin, okay, in Luke's gospel. So Matthew's gospel used the word, used the word debt. So we're going to focus a little bit on, on debt this morning. I entitled the message, Your Account Has Been Paid in Full. Now I got to thinking about that. How many of you have ever had somebody uh, pay your bill? Laura, Laura's had somebody pay her bill. Uh, Pat's had someone pay her bill. Man, we're just, people have had that, that happen. I'm thinking about, you know, in, in the grocery line, maybe that's happened to you. One, one of my favorite places for that to happen, because this has happened to me lots of times, okay? Lots of times it's happened to me, is in the Starbucks line. You know, I'll be sitting in line, I'll order, you know, and I don't have a big order. I usually just one, one, one drink, one coffee by myself, and, and somebody will have paid for my coffee before I get there. Well, then all of a sudden you feel obligated to pay the, the person's bill behind you, right? Now, that doesn't always work out real well for you, because if, like, you've ordered something and it's like $3.50, and then you pay for the order behind you, that could be an issue. I know a friend of mine, he's really, in, he's really into that, um, and he was constantly doing that. In fact, he would initiate it and um, pay for the person's order, you know, behind him. And uh, he shared with me one time that uh, he had got up to uh, the window, and it was a $40 order. I laughed. I thought it was kind of funny. I said, well, they were blessed. <laughs> I'm not sure you were, but they were blessed. I think he ordered a coffee and paid $40 for it. Um, it's, always, it's always really, really uh, encouraged encouraging to have someone pay your, your, your bill. I remember uh, several years ago, I was sitting in a, in a Bob Evans, and I was eating breakfast with a group of pastors. And uh, there was four of us at the table, and we got up to leave, and the, and the waitress said, hey, look, someone paid all your bills. I thought that was like, and we had no idea uh, who paid the bill, but they paid for four ministers' uh, they paid for our paid our, our, our breakfast bill, and uh, what what a blessing, what a blessing that was. It's it's always encourage encouraging to have that happen. It's also a real blessing to be able to do that, right? To help someone else out in need, and to help them to pay uh, their particular particular debt. Hey, we're not going to focus on paid debts this morning. We're going to focus on the ultimate debt that was paid. Um, Jesus paid our our debt, and he paid it in full. And, uh, and, and the debt that was paid, we've been singing about it all morning. We've been talking about it all morning. In fact, I got to thinking, I uh, really don't have a whole lot left to say because it's all been said. It's all been saying about this morning. It's, it's been so good. Uh, the message has been proclaimed uh, very well uh, here this morning. Jesus, Jesus paid, uh, paid our debt, and he paid it upon, upon the cross. And, uh, and you may say, well, you know, um, I don't know a whole lot. I thought it was interesting the other night. I was here for the, for the, for the youth service, and um, Pastor Brian was talking about the fact that, you know, there are those that are raised in the church. And, and you think about those that are raised in the church and have always been a part of the church, and, you know, that you, you, you've gone to you know, vacation Bible schools, and, and you've, gone to, you've gone to children's camps, you've gone to youth camps, 
and you've just been a part of family camps, and you're part of every service in the church. You've been in revival meetings. I mean, when the doors were open, you were in church, man. And church has just been like your life, right? And, and for some individuals, they look back, and, and it's hard for them to determine when the actual day was that they actually acknowledged Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. I, I remember a really good friend of mine uh, in Winchester, Virginia, um, she was that kind of person. Um, she said to me one time, she said, you know, I really don't remember truly when I acknowledged Jesus as my Savior. She, I think it was about three years old. And, and her and I would talk about our personal testimonies because my testimony was the opposite. Uh, I was that individual who was not raised in a church. I didn't, you know, went to a few Bible schools, uh, mainly because of, of good, good Christian people who uh, wanted to win an award by seeing how many people they could take. Now, some people frown on that, but I got to tell you, somebody who maybe had won a bicycle or a Bible over the year because they had you know, taken more people to a Bible school or to uh, an event at church, uh, people frowned on that. Hey, listen, I, I ended up in church because of that, so I'm grateful for those kind of campaigns. Okay, I just, I say, I'm grateful for those kind of campaigns, uh, but I never got grounded in the church until I was 25 years old. So I had this really, really dark side that, that, uh, that I experienced in my life. And so I have, this, I have this unique testimony of when I know when, where, and why. And it's, it's like a glorious deliverance. Although my friend Amy, she would say to me at times, she said, I wish I had that, that, kind, of, that kind of testimony. And I would say to her, no, you don't. I wanted to stand up the other night at the youth service. TJ, I did. I wanted to stand up and speak from a different perspective so that they would understand what they were talking about. I wanted to tell everybody in the room, because we had this, we had this audience, captive audience is young, and uh, to say to them, listen, you don't know the blessing that you have, because regardless of what we've been forgiven of, it's really hard to eradicate those, those thoughts, those events from our minds. And it really is. I mean, God has forgiven us completely. He has cleansed us completely. But still, we have that past, right? It would be better not to have lived that past and to live the past that some of you have lived. But, but, but the truth is that even if you've lived in the church all of your life and, or if you've not lived in the church all of your life, it's not that, you, that, not that I owe more than what you owe. You may have the idea when we could, we could put up, a, we could put up a, a nice whiteboard up here and we could put a couple of names up here and we could say, okay, this is the life you lived and, and man, you were like, you were like perfect. So you don't know quite as much, right? And then you got guys like me up here, and it's, man, we owe everything because we, we'll never get that debt paid. I, but the truth is that, that God sees us all with the same eyes. I mean, that's just, we all owe the same debt. We all, we all must acknowledge that we need a Savior. We all must confess that we have, we have sinned. Because, because the word proclaims in, in Romans 3.23, doesn't it? It proclaims in Romans 3.23 that we have all sinned and we fall short of the glory of God. Nobody is exempt. I said, so when we, 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 we come into a setting like this and, and sometimes we want to be like the, we want to be like the publican who, who prayed, you know, over the sinner and said, hey, look, you know, as he was praying in there, he said, hey, look, I'm glad I'm not like that, that sinner over there. You know, I'm a... and, and, and the truth is when God sees us, he sees us with his love and he sees us with the same eyes. That's, that's how he sees us. So we all, we, we, we all must acknowledge that we need his forgiveness. We all have to, we all have to come to that point. We're not, we're not exempt. We, we can't say, well, you know, I'm a pretty good person. You know how many times over the years I've heard that particular statement? Well, I'm a pretty good person. I've never, I've never stolen. I've never, I've never, I've never swore. I've, you know, um, I do all the right stuff. The truth is, you're just as lost as I was. That's you have to acknowledge Jesus as your Savior. 
You have to confess your sin before him. We say, well, I don't have much to confess. It may be more than you think. Recently, I had a conversation with an individual who was pointing out the sins of other people. And I'm pretty quick to say, look at the plank in your own eye before you investigate the speck in others' eyes. Because first of all, your judgmental spirit is a sin. Oh, I was bold enough to say that, by the way. Because the individual thought that they were, and everybody else was, we must first acknowledge that uh, we need his, his forgiveness. Um, we all, we all owe a debt that we cannot pay. I mean, there used to be a, a, a tool that was used to uh, evangelize individuals, and, and, uh, and that question will be asked, you're like, what kind of person are you? And you might come back with the response that we've just been talking about. Well, I've gone to church all my life, and you know, I've never missed a service, and uh, I have all the Sunday school awards, and, and I've given a great deal to the, the, the church, and uh, I'm there every time the doors are open. I'm at, at all the events, and, and man, I'm like, I'm like super Christian. Like, and, and the question would be asked, you might remember this question might be asked, well, have you followed all the commandments? Like, well, sure. Well, then when you start listing the commandments, they're like, oh, man, yeah, I'm messing up there because I can't live up to that. The truth is none of us can live up to it. None of us can live up to uh, the perfection of God. None of us can live up to those standards. We're all going to fall short in some area in our life. So you may think, well, you know what? I, I don't do those things. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a criminal. I don't steal. I don't murder. I don't, I don't do all those bad things. I, I, but then I have resentment in my heart. I got pride. Idolatry, one of the greatest sins of the culture that we live in today. You say, well, I don't worship idols. Anything that we put before God becomes an idol in our life. So we, we start thinking about these things as, as individuals. All of us, actually, if we make that list and we're honest with ourselves, we're all falling short of the glory of God. All of us. Sometimes we get angry. Now, I believe there is such a thing as righteous anger. I believe that. I believe you can get angry and it can be a righteous anger. You know, for, for example, you see a, an individual hurting a child and it makes you angry. Angry enough to respond. I, don't, I think that's the way God made us and I think that's okay. That's not a sin. But when I'm, a, when I'm, a, when I'm offended or, or when, when I allow my pride to cause me to be angry, therefore then it becomes a sin. So all of us, we... If we'd make a list, we'd discover that we've all sinned and we've fallen short of the glory of God. But I got good news for you. I got good news for you that, that, that what you could not pay has been paid for. Hey, I'm going I'm to jump around a little bit in my sermon this morning, only because I, I think it's, it's necessary. If you look into uh, your Bible in Ephesians uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 8 and 9, uh, Paul very clearly states this, and uh, sometimes we miss it. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is key. It is not of yourselves. Can't save yourself. People try. I know even individuals I've seen in, 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 my, in, my, in my journey as, as, as a believer in the church, I've seen individuals try to save themselves, to sanctify themselves, to live righteousness on their own, in their own power. It never works out. They literally become an obstacle in the church. We're only saved through faith. It's not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. It's not of works. So no matter how much we do. Now, I'm not encouraging you not to do anything. 
because I believe that when we are inspired by the Holy Spirit, when we are, we are filled and moved by the Holy Spirit to do God's work, we will accomplish a lot. But if we're working for the wrong reasons, if we're working trying to earn our way into the kingdom, you will recall that there was an individual that when he met before the Lord and the Lord said, basically, why should I let you in? Because of everything that I've done. I've, you know, fed the poor. I've given water to the thirsty. And Jesus said, I don't know who you are. You probably did some pretty good work. But I didn't know you. Because you sought your salvation through your own works and not through Jesus. He goes on to say, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in, we should walk in them. And so Jesus is the only adequate payment for our sin. He paid the price with his life. He gave his life for our life. Prior to that, they were killing a whole lot of animals. Priests were laying their hands upon the heads of those animals as they slaughtered them as a way of casting their personal sin upon that animal so that they would be forgiven temporarily. Jesus would become the Lamb of God, the ultimate sacrifice of God, that our sin would be laid upon him forevermore. We can be forgiven into eternity with God himself. I'm careful with my words because that also depends on us. We can acknowledge him as Savior. We can confess our sins. We can walk with him. But we have free will. We can turn around and walk away. Be careful you do not do that. Romans chapter 5, verse 6, Paul writes again. You know, Paul's a great theologian. I just, you know, when I want to read some really good theology, I read Paul's letters. And uh, Romans is one of my favorite, one of my favorite letters that Paul wrote to the church. One of my favorites. I think they're all my favorite. He goes on to say, uh, Paul writes here in Romans chapter 5, verse 6, he says, for when we were still without strength. And when we were still without strength. You know, I noticed uh, early on in my my journey of faith, and I say early on in my journey of faith, even before I acknowledged Jesus Christ as my Savior, there there was this seeking of him. He was seeking me, but I was also seeking him. And and I was trying to live up to, you know, the right the right standards, the right I was trying to do some things on on my own. And and this passage speaks into that truth because I was trying to do it in my own strength. You know, one of the things I've discovered, even in my journey after all these years, there are times that I will, and I have to be honest with you, and if You know what, if you would be honest, you would say the same thing I'm about to say. There are times that we revert back to our own strength. We all do. And and when we do that, aren't we just miserable? Especially when we're doing his work. Don't do do his work in your strength. It's tiring. It's frustrating. Oh, but when you do it in his strength, there's a joy. There's a blessing. We want to say in due time, just in the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. And you'll love this. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, Someone would even dare to die. 
But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. A daughter constantly reminds me, and I can't pronounce the, 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 the Greek word. Uh, I'll just confess that I struggle sometimes with Greek words and Hebrew words. I've been reading Chronicles. Have you guys been reading Chronicles? And, and I, I'm reading a Chronicles, and, I'm, I'm, and, and we have all those, those names, of, the lineage of all those people. And I'm like, I was tempted. I, honestly, I've got to tell you, I was tempted like, I'm just going to pass over that. Because, like, I can't pronounce half these guys' names. And it's just a bunch of family members. And it's like, it, and I thought, no, I want to read this. And, and then when I'm reading it, man, God is blessing me because I'm finding things. It's like, oh, wow, I didn't know that was there. And it's like, don't glaze over that. Don't, get, I know you're not going to, like, I don't know if I ever preached from Chronicles in some of that lineage, okay? I just don't know if that will ever happen. I'm not sure that that will be a part of my devotions, like, long term. But I, I got some good out of it. Um, the, the, the word that, she uses a word, in, but it literally is interpreted um, image of God is what the word is. Inter- image of God. And did you know that we're all created in the image of God? One of the things that I kept hearing repeatedly yesterday over and over and over again was the, the fact that, um, that these young men and young women that are just right there out on the street that are being uh, abused, um, they're created in the image of God. Sometimes we, we overlook that that makes us uncomfortable. But they were created in the image of God. And because they were created in the image of God, when God sees them, he sees them with his eyes and with his heart. And God demonstrated his love toward them and toward us when he gave his life on the cross. That's what, that's what Paul says here in, uh, in his letter he wrote to, to the church at Rome. Um, much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. How much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved by his life? Not only that, we also rejoice in Christ through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Uh, I'm going to try to land this thing. Uh, there's, there's more here than what I, uh, I anticipated. Um, John 1, 9 is one of, my, one of my favorite verses of Scripture. In fact, it, if I would say to you, there's a book in the Bible that I absolutely love and have read more than any other book, it's John 1. And uh, John 1, 9 says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our unrighteousness. Uh, or cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. See, I'm, tra- I'm, I'm actually trying to quote it from several different translations. That's where I get messed up. Uh, you understand, we must confess our sin, and then he is faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, but we all have sin to, to confess. And uh, I happen to be under the, uh, the belief that, uh, that when we confess, we don't confess vaguely, but we confess that which we have sinned. Hey, God, I don't realize... God will tell you what you've done or what you're doing. And, and when you confess that sin and you ask God to forgive you of it, uh, God will cleanse you of it, not cover it. Big difference. It's not hidden. It's cleansed. It's gone. Now Christ forgives us if we confess our sins, if we acknowledge him as Savior, and we are ready for eternity. We are reconciled to the Father. We are reconciled into the image that God created us to be. Now, here's, here's again, I'm going to land it right now because this is where it gets tough. We're really good sometimes at, or maybe we're not really good at it, at asking God to forgive us. And we expect God to forgive us when we ask, Right? I mean, God, forgive me. And we kind of expect that because God says he'll do that, right? But then in, in, the, in the Lord's Prayer, he also 
expresses to us that we also must forgive those who have de- sinned, I'm going to use Luke's gospel, sinned against us. That's hard. I write in a note here that our salvation depends on that. We, that, that's so hard. It's so hard sometimes. And you, you will say, well, well, preacher, you don't know what was done to me. You don't know what was said about me. You don't know. You don't, I know I don't. But I, but I do know this, that for us to begin to, to understand healing, the healing power of God, we must forgive I, I just, I'm going to be frank, I'm going to be honest with you this morning. If you have offended me and, 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 and I've said I have forgiven you, that forgiveness is not for your blessing and benefit. Okay? Although it's kind of nice that when I've done something wrong, someone says, hey, look, I've forgiven you. That's great. There is more of a blessing. There is more of a benefit. There is more healing that takes place when we are willing to let go of that which has offended us or that which has hurt us. That we have, we have turned it over. We have trusted it with the power of God. We have given it to him. It is then that we can begin to actually experience healing in our life when we have let go of. There are so many. As, as, I, as I listened yesterday, uh, I'm tempted to come down. As I listened yesterday uh, about... I think the number was 64, 65% of, of our population has experienced some kind of major trauma in their life. Trauma actually almost always comes in a hurt, in a way we have been offended, or, and often we hold on to that for years upon years upon years, and it does nothing but destroy us with within. When we are willing to say, God, I have forgiven I have let go as you have let go of. We begin to experience healing in our life. And so two things this morning I learned from this prayer that I hope you have learned from this prayer. One, that the the debt that we owe, we cannot pay that debt. Jesus has paid it. It's paid in full. It is done. The work has been accomplished, to be accomplished no more. It's not, to be, it's not going to be done over again. It is done. We must receive what Jesus did for us on the cross by acknowledging him as, as a Savior and confessing that we have need of a Savior. Secondly, this morning that I've learned from this, that we also, as Jesus forgave us, he said we must forgive others. And so to truly experience the full blessing of God, we must receive that love, but we also must give it back. You can't have one without the other. You can say, well, I'm a Christian, but I don't like that person next door, and I'll never forgive them. That will not work. The hardest thing in the world that we'll, we'll do, I believe, is to Look upon that individual and say, I have forgiven you. I've let go of it. I'm not holding on to it anymore. You say, oh, preacher, I can't do that. I know you can't. And I can't either. But I know with the power of the living God living in us and through us that we can because in his strength, we can do all things. And to be, truly, to be truly a sanctified believer, we are filled with his perfect unconditional love, which means we'll offer forgiveness, real forgiveness. So I understand this morning, I'm just going to ask you, we have, altar, uh, we have our altars here. Um, if you, you know, I'm not going to assume we're in a room full of faithful believers. I'm not going to assume that every person in this room is, uh, is, is acknowledged Jesus as your Savior. Maybe you, you've gone to church all of your life and you've done all the right things. 
and you still haven't acknowledged that you need Jesus. That might be you. And I know the hardest step that you ever take is maybe stepping to an altar or maybe right where you're at, just simply acknowledging Jesus. I've been trying to do this on my own. I need you. I need you to save me. I need you to come into my life. If that's you this morning, I encourage you. Listen to the Holy Spirit. You do not want to be standing before God someday and him say to you, remember when I gave you the opportunity or the opportunities year after year and you continually refused. You don't want to be that person. I also this morning, as important as the first uh, request, if you're holding on to something this morning against someone else or something and you've never let go of it, why don't you ask God to help you to do that today? To, and to know what it means to be truly free. Because you're not free. You're enslaved by that which has hurt you. Give it to God. I'm just going to give you a few moments. altars are here, still a great place to come and meet with God. As I prayed this morning already, the words of uh, an unknown individual by most, Jabez prayed this prayer, Lord bless me indeed. I pray, Father, today that you would bless our congregation with all the blessings that you have for them. May this day be a day of, of joy, of peace, of protection. I pray for your provision this week. And Lord, may we be the salt and the light that you've called us to be. We pray this in your name, in Jesus' name, amen.